Noel and Liam here from Games, Brains and Headbanging Live, GBHBL.com for sure. And it's We're Afraid of the Dark. Ah, you are, are you afraid of the dark walkthrough, talk through, review series? And we're up to episode four of season three, The Tale of the Phone Police. Written by David Preston and directed by Jean-Marie Camel. A uh, small cast to mention here, Marcus Tenner, Turner as Jake O'Brien, Ryan Kent as Chris and Marlo. Uh, Dawn is Annie O'Brien. That's the three mains. Uh, there's some extra cast here and there, but these are the three people who are focusing on the stars, so to speak. Um, if you're aware of it, you probably already know this, but I think it's worth repeating just for people who are. This is clearly inspired by the Thought Police from George Orwell's novel 1984, which includes obviously the references to removing the traces of a person's existence. Mm. Okay, cool. Uh, but what you really definitely want to know, because I was like, wait, what? This episode was the basis for the weird Al Yankovic song, Phony Calls, which itself is a parody of the TLC's Waterfalls song. Really? really? That is random. That is. And creator DJ McHal has said that he felt that the finished episode didn't do the script justice. So basically, he, th- he thinks that they had a better script. Yeah, I can I can see why he might think that. Uh, I'd argue that it's uh, that the script that it's it's both probably equally bad in my opinion. Um, but uh, it's a Tucker story, so we it is Tucker's second story now. Picking him up quick now is the new introduction, and he says it's a story about phones and somehow it's going to try and make them scary, which immediately had me lost. I was like, oh my god, there's nothing scary about a phone, like you know. I know this. It's, <clears throat> I felt like it was going real R.L. Stein there, you know, just taking any inanimate, inanimate object. And trying to turn it into like a horror story. That's like his whole bag, isn't it? <laughs> that is very good. That is very oral style. Just, yep, there's a random thing. Although there is a clever little trick as he he basically does this by phoning in his story using Gary to set him up on a loudspeaker as he calls from elsewhere. I thought that technology was fascinating to look at by today's standards, of course, you know? Oh, absolutely. It's obviously it immediately dates the show like insanely but at the same time i'm i'm really wondering like how they've managed it and what how it works kind of thing it's quite interesting because you know presumably they're in the middle of the woods here you know getting a phone to work in like that sort of mobile form you know in those times and the contraption that it is and everything is really fascinating yeah it is fascinating it seems like it would have been actually impossible if it was if we were based on the reality of being in the middle of the woods i mean power source alone there's no way you're gonna have to get batteries it's it's just interesting to see because yeah. of what we could do now. Tucker tells, him, Tucker tells him that he thinks the telephone is one of the scariest things in your house. After all, you might feel safe with your doors and windows locked, but all that someone has to do is dial your phone number, and when you answer your phone, they're inside. When the phone is answered, the connection is made, and it might be a place you don't want to be connected to. This is the same level of nonsense that Kiki was spouting about moving. This is nonsense. Shut up. Mm. That doesn't that does not work. It's not. And like actually, there's a little pushback, a little pushback from some of the members of the Minute Society about it. It's kind of like, oh, like you hear a voice, yeah. what does it matter? You know? Yeah, I mean, that's something, but I at least it is a unique format for telling a story, you know, it does mix it up a little bit. It's you not know, it's a good idea. I mean, considering they are bashing him as much for being a kid and that, you know, it's quite a quite a good idea. I'd like to have seen like the conversation he had with Gary, you know, suggesting it like how he was going to go about it and whatnot. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll agree with that. But submit for the approval of Minute Society. This is the tale of the phone place. Two young boys, Jake O'Brien and Chris, are making prank phone calls. Chris is not so good at them, whereas Jake is confident and shows Chris how it's done, pretending he's a radio host to some woman that answers. While this is going on, we get POV of someone or something outside then coming in, kind of heading towards them. It's a, a lazy start, setting up the two characters, a little bit of prank calls, and then this. Considering what this POV will end up being, it's a really weird start. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I was actually going to mention at the beginning, um, uh, for some reason in my mind, I always got this mixed up with the Goosebumps episode. It's called Don't Go to Sleep. And it's uh-huh. about the kid who says he like can't stand reality. And then he goes to sleep and wakes up and it has loads of like weird scenarios that he finds himself in, in his reality. And I, in my mind, I always got these two confused. I always used to think that was called um, that was like an episode about the like phone police and that sort of thing because it just has like a similar vibe to them. I thought, I, in my mind, I always got them mixed up. I don't know why. 
Yeah, I think I uh, completely where you're coming from. Well, I didn't get the comparative. When you say it, I'm like, okay, both have a dreamlike aspect. Uh, in Don't Go to Sleep, he's pursued by two agents. Yes. Here we get those two police officers. Yeah, I mean, I can mm -hmm. definitely see it. <clears throat> yeah, that was just my young mind always getting confused. <laughs> so in centimeters, how wide is Antarctica? Obviously an impossible question, and this woman has 10 seconds to answer to win a dream vacation. Of course, the joke is lame, but before his countdown can end, a young woman arrives behind him and grabs the phone out of their hands. This was the POV sort of scare we're doing. And you talk about Goosebumps, but this sort of opening reminded me of the more classic cold open thing we used to do with Goosebumps. Mm. Yeah, we got a lot of those. <laughs> yes. This is Jake's older sister, Annie, and she is not pleased. Seeing as she's been left in charge while her parents are away. She claims that they don't have to worry about mom and dad because they're going to get caught by the phone police. Of course, this makes them curious and Annie tells them a story. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I was I was struggling already. I remember just sitting there being like, really? Phone police? Doesn't it help yeah. that all I can <laughs> hearing, uh, are you a Peep Show fan? Of course, yeah. Of course. So all I, any time I hear the phone police, and there were, obviously it references the thought police, all I hear is a mm. certain character who appears in one episode going, talking about the thought police. It's a, an old episode about a racist <clears throat> character who mm. slowly gets found out as being racist, and he talks about the thought police. All I can hear when Daryl, Daryl's character's name is, Daryl's voice in my head going, oh, please. <laughs> yeah. So... The story. The telephone has rules. Don't let it ring for too long. Don't leave it off the hook. And certainly don't make any prank phone calls. Fail to heed these warnings and you'll have to answer to the phone police who enforce the rules of the telephone. And he claims that a boy named Billy Baxter was caught by the phone police making prank calls and he was never seen or heard from again. Of course, that's just nonsense as far as Jake is concerned. But Chris is a little frightened and heads off home. What? <laughs> Jake wanted to prove that his sister, his sister is full of it looks in the phone book but is surprised to see the phone number of Billy Baxter in it it is a little odd though because it's bigger than the other names and numbers in bold and with less digits and again of course dating this the fact that phone book exists when was the last time you had a phone book I remember to be fair they only disappeared fairly recently in this country Mm, yeah, you can still um, an actual phone book. Yeah, I mean, you used to get the big yellow pages. You can still get like a smaller version if you like order it online for free or something. But uh, it's not like what it once was. We never had it in like I don't know if it was like the same in Canada. Like I've seen in movies, like in America, where they would literally have listings of everyone's actual like phone numbers in the neighborhood and stuff like that. You could like call up and add your nickname to like this long phone book. I never think we had, don't think we ever had anything like that in this country, as far as I saw. It was just like businesses, you know, businesses, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think you are right. I think you are right. Maybe we go further back. It was a bit more like that, but certainly not in my, I, I can remember my era. Mm -hmm. Obviously, considering the phone number has less digits, calling her won't work. But he calls it anyway, and someone answers begging for help. So naturally scared, Jake hangs up. But that night, his phone keeps on ringing. It's the same person asking for help. Annoyed, Jake unplugs the phone, but it keeps on ringing regardless, and the voice keeps on begging for help. I think if this had been like sticking with this and going down, maybe the idea of like it being a haunting now, I think it would have been more intriguing because I don't mind how the voice, the sort of crackly static, and the sort of person who was lying begging for help, I don't mind that. Mm, yeah. The next day, Jake and Chris are out for a walk. Chris thinks it might have been Annie playing a joke at him. That is until they pass a payphone that starts to ring. Chris answers and reveals the call to Jake. It's the same voice from the night begging for help. Um, on a, you know, rather than being like, right, this is terrifying and clearly impossible. Jake goes, well, I've had enough and I'm going to go to the phone company to get answers because you can actually go to the phone company to get answers in the show, which is fun. They make their way to the office of the phone company and speak to the receptionist, asking about the number. And she looks at it and says, no, that's an old number. And it's discontinued. But Jake basically says, no, no, I rang it and got a response. She's kind of like, no, look, that can't really be the case. But fine, go to the records department um, and ask there for because it's an old number. But when they walk away, you kind of see, the, see her look at them oddly and then press a button under her desk. So naturally something bad's about to happen. In the basement where the records are kept, the kids are greeted by the elderly phone company manager. See, this is where I think I get your vibes of, like, don't go to sleep. Because this is a bit more dreamlike. The style, the way the camera's shot as well. Because it kind of does that up close and under the chin look. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. The inquiries about the phone number are short-lived, though, as the old man accuses Jake of making prank calls. Jake's confusion turns to fear, though, when two guards grab him. It's the phone police terrifying scenario. Mm -hmm. And he's arrested as a hiding Chris can only, can only watch as Jake is taken away. Uh, I went back and tried to understand this because I could not quite fathom how Chris didn't get caught. Like, it just sort of mm. cuts and he's hiding. And what, but like, he was mm. clearly there a minute ago. Yeah, you know, you're right. You are right. Uh, Jake is thrown in a cell where he then gets a call from his phone tormentor. The voice reveals himself as Billy Baxter and that he was also a victim of the phone police. Jake should never have fooled around with the telephone and there is no escape now. And Jake's like, well, I've got a telephone. But he points out that the phone in the cell can only take incoming calls, but with the caveat that it can call back a person who calls at first, like when Jake phoned Billy. Mm. Uh, what? That's just unnecessarily complex. Yeah, it is quite complex, for sure. Particularly as Billy says, maybe someday he'll be lucky enough for somebody to call him. Um, Chris, though, having escaped, goes to tell Annie what happened. However, in the twist, she doesn't know who Chris is and claims to have no brother. Shocked, mm -hmm. Chris tries to prove it, but even Jake's bedroom is now in office. Demanding that he leave, Annie reveals to Chris that the kid, the phone police got in a story, is actually called Jake O'Brien. So the story's changed for it to be Jake who has got instead of Billy Baxter. This is awful. I think this is the worst sequence in the fucking episode, purely because of the acting. And um, I don't get it. This ran, in theory, Annie, this random kid busts into your house screaming about a stranger or when she on the act up on the plays it so severely to the point where she actually gives this person time of day to the point where mm. she's all like like following around the house and answering his questions like that's not how you'd react to this definitely not and uh yeah even up to the halfway point now i was just finding this to be quite a slow and boring episode doesn't really wasn't really doing much for me it's, i think it's mainly under the fact that i don't really feel bad for billy particularly because Making prank calls is dumb. You know, it's an annoying thing to do to people, even, you know, and it seems like he kind of deserves to be taught a lesson here. So, you know, I get people would probably consider what he's doing harmless. I guess the things that happen to him may seem quite dramatic, but it's obviously like designed in a way to be like, uh, you know, it to, to, to not to like um, encourage kids maybe watching this to not do the same thing. I think that's kind of the idea behind it. So, but, um, so it's kind of like you're stuck in the shoes of with this character who is being taught a lesson and they kind of deserve it. So I don't really feel bad for him in any way. <laughs> yeah. A lackluster message being told and sent here. Uh, yeah. So Jake has replaced Billy in the story and has been erased from existence. Something Chris is able to confirm when he finds Jake's number in the phone book. Okay, then. Right. Well, here's the biggest flaw in this entire episode. Why does Chris remember him? How does mm. Chris remember him? Yeah, I mean, they don't really ever explain that, do they? Why he is able to remember him and nobody else can. Yep, yep, makes no yeah. sense. Um, scene the number, Chris calls Jake and Jake begs him for help. Chris, quite calm, considering the situation, tells Jake that he's got a plan. Again, this is just weird. So for stars, again, if you're in a phone, please, why are you putting the fucking number in the book? Why mm. are you even putting it there for it to be called? It doesn't make any sense. But Chris's reaction to this entire scenario, he just goes, hold on, Jake, I've got a plan. Dude, like... Mm. You were far too chilled about the scenario. We now cut to this plan being enacted. Chris goes back to the phone company and calls Jake's cell number from a phone on the wall. When it starts ringing, he uses a rubber band on the hook, which means it will continue to ring as long as Jake doesn't pick it up. I don't know. I don't know about that. I did the baby. I don't know. Mm. Um, Chris is able to sneak by the receptionist where in the basement, Jake's phone is ringing in the cell over and over again. This is annoying the phone manager who ends up leaving his desk to confront Jake for not answering the phone. As he opens Jake's cell door, Chris pushes him over the prone body of Jake, who's kind of lying down, trapping him inside and allowing Jake to escape. So that was their big plan. And uh, the phone police or phone company are really, really bad at keeping people captive, clearly. Clearly. <laughs> They set about trying to find an exit as the phone police search for them. After some close calls, including being chased in the streets, they make it back to Jake's house. But Annie doesn't remember them, right? Well, she does now, as everything is seemingly back to normal. 
All right. Who is that at the door, though? Oh, it's just a pizza delivery guy. Did any of this actually happen? Or was it all in our imaginations? That would have been an interesting way at least to end the episode. I could have lived with that and been like, you know what, fine. It's an interesting idea. Maybe it never really happened and it was just their own imaginations. Except we see the pizza guy go outside, take like here, um, like a sign off the front of his car to reveal that he's a phone police. And I was like, okay, so what was he doing? Checking up on them? I don't get it. Especially as the final scene of the story is Jake's phone beginning to ring again and we hear Billy's sinister laughing in the background. Yeah. I I don't get this episode. It really, yeah, it does kind of dumbfound me. Like I, I said, I wasn't really enjoying it up to the halfway point and unfortunately even in the second half, I didn't feel like it really improved. It's all, all just a bit too slow and lacking and uh, yeah, like I said, the whole point of this episode seems to be just to teach him a lesson and he gets away with it scot-free it seems so for some unknown reason they don't really explain why he just left back to like go back to his, his life and the phone police are an overarching presence i guess within the world but then you know you can yeah i don't really get it at all it would have been better to have a final 30 seconds where i don't know they come back you see the phone police reporting back to the manager and saying we we think he's learned his lesson now like so that their goal was simply to teach him a lesson like, at least that yeah. would be something. Are they like, yeah, or, in, or properly show us that, you know, he, the person that came back isn't actually Billy, you know. His act, yeah. you know, it's, it's like some kind of clone or something like... Uh, you mean Jake, yeah, you mean Jake, yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Billy's the original kid. Yeah, something would have, just somebody give it a little meat to the bones because I 100% agree with you. This is a really bad episode. It's slow, it's boring, the story content isn't interesting, the resolution isn't good, it's confusing in places. Um, and aside, really, the only thing that really stands out about it is the open, the Midnight Society stuff, the setup, and the ending, which involves Tucker quietly sneaking up behind uh, Frank and scaring him as the meeting ends. Um, that's like that's like that's about it, I think. Yeah, and I think I don't know why, but even though it's not a good episode for some reason, just the the name, like the phone police, that whole thing, kind of like has always stuck with me. And it might be because I've always mixed it up with the Goosebumps episode. So at least that's something to its credit. It's like memorable in that regard, I guess. <laughs> I don't Interesting, know. because it's not like the Goosebumps episode was a good episode. It wasn't imagine. I remember we talked about it being quite creative, but we acknowledged mm. it wasn't a good episode. Yeah, we did say that, but it had like that surreal, surreal like stuff going on, which Goosebumps did quite well a lot of the time. But yeah, this so maybe, really, yeah, if this really would have pushed that, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah if this would have pushed, pushed the more. surrealism. Yeah, it didn't. And what we we got, what we're left with, episode four, the tale of the phone place. You got any thoughts on this? You know what to do? Let us know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see more content like this, please consider hitting the subscribe button it is gratefully appreciated you can find us over at gbhbl.com our full website where reviews news and so much more goes up daily we're also on all social media platforms facebook instagram twitter threads at gbhbl just search for gbhbl and you will find us out there we also have merchandise on sale you can access the shop via the website